Really, the last class uh, should be, have a, another name at least underneath it, um, that this is about the wisdom of God, <clears throat> and tonight's will also. And um, uh, that'll help the people who are trying to order these things to get them together and you know, know what, what's going on if they're labeled properly. So there is that. And uh, so um, let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we are, we are hungry, but more than that, we are excited that your spirit, your Holy Spirit is breaking bread with us, not just through my sharings, but one with another and what you're showing in the word to our people here that want your son and that want to understand your workings and your ways. I ask that you just bring forth the word that you want to bring forth tonight and that it would further prepare us for even greater vistas that are going to be shared. We thank you for the groundwork that we're doing now, but it is only leading us to greater things. We love you, Jesus. Father, we love you. Father, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for blessing us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Thank you. So Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Well, I'd like to um, do what I usually do when we <clears throat> are teaching uh, along the way is to bring you back uh, just a little bit of what we've already covered and then move into <clears throat> where we're going. And the main scripture, actually, that we had, uh, were dealing with was 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. And um, we were looking at this in relationship to being in Son, being placed by the Father, as it were, in the Son, or in the world of done, which is just a name that I used, and I guess probably sometime I will tell you why or whatever, but uh, I use that particular name, but I think it's self-evident. <clears throat> so First John 3, verse 1 through 3. Behold what manner of love the Father. Um, you know that that's how Ephesians starts, right? Yeah. Well, this is 1 John. This is written by John. And it's so similar. It has, has many of the same elements one of them being the love, the love, and finding out that, um, if, I can, if I may say some things in advance and then explain them later as we go, <clears throat> finding out that it's not about righteousness, which will make people go, <gasps> but it is about righteousness. It's not about our righteousness but it's about the righteousness of God. And that's what counts. That's what counts. But it, but it is <clears throat> based on this love that God had toward us, as we've looked at some of the scriptures that say that, um, before the foundation of the world. And I know and I, I am well aware <clears throat> that the scriptures speak of us being placed in Christ, you know, around the, the, the situation of 
Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, right? We were in him. You are dead. Well, how did that happen? You were in him, and he took us down into death. And <clears throat> on and on and on. But my point being is that if you, if you will, on the timeline, and then we'll put this right here, uh, not BC, but BW, before the world. I could have used BC, but it, it would have been before creation, but you know. So before creation, before everything was created, before you were cre created, or even thought of being created, <clears throat> um, there was that work here uh, also as you move forward out into time and then comes the cross <clears throat> and then comes the resurrection. Well, before the world, God placed us in his son. But it wasn't his, um, may I say it, the only begotten son. It wasn't the son of man, Jesus of Nazareth. It was the son, the eternal son, before all time. And so that's, that's where we get this. But then when Jesus came and, and became the Son of Man, and when Jesus came and became Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, not God's eternal Son, the Father's Son before there was anything, Jesus came. And yes, he died. And yes, we were taken down into death, and then we were also raised up with him. And obviously, we will really get into those scriptures in Ephesians. Ephesians is really so full, and so is, so is Colossians. Um, but particularly, I think, Ephesians um, divides things really well. So there is this love. Well, God is love, right? God is love, you know, and never does it say Jesus is love. Never does it say the Holy Spirit is love. Never does it say the Father is love. But those three together are God, and God is love. And to love the way God loves requires that there be more than one. Does that make sense? Yes. Unless you're just going to love yourself. Well, there's a lot of that going on. <laughs> but nonetheless, nonetheless, that kind of love cannot and never will be the love of God. Never will be uh, understood in any realm with the same love that is the love of God are God, who is love. So we're talking about before the world, amen? I mean, when we talk like this, we're, <laughs> we just went out. You said, wow, we went out into ether ways. We shot past Jupiter, did it? No, none of that existed. <laughs> no. This is what God is, and, and we don't have a lot of information what that realm was like unless the realm that it was like is God. But we do get glimpses, and we do have scriptures, and there are things that begin to bring us spiritually, it has to be, we don't want it to just bring us mentally to understand, well, God is love and it takes more than that and all that kind of stuff. That, 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 that's going to lead nowhere. But spiritually, well, that takes the Holy Spirit and it always will. And he's really good at what he does. He's, he's so good at it, Jesus said, I got to go away. This guy's going to come. 
then he's going to teach you the real me, not this guy you're looking at right now called Jesus of Nazareth. So, <clears throat> behold what manner of love. There is a different manner of love that I just described, isn't there? There's a different manner of his love. That love that the Father bestowed upon us. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. So this great love wherewith we have been loved of God, or been our God is love, is being bestowed on us. And what we're going to find is that this is the groundwork for everything that the world have done is about. That God is love. And to go there, you have to leave this. You have to leave this time period, but you have to leave this realm, because once this creation started, it was that it was a, a different realm. It was just a different realm. But now, we who are birthed not by new to birth, but just literally birthed into this realm, can um, say you know, to start softening our hearts and then just say to the Holy Spirit, beam me up <laughs> into another realm. Amen. Take me where you are. Take me where you've always been. Take me to what's in your heart to bring me into. Behold this love. Open my heart first, and then open my eyes, that we may see or behold what manner of love that is, this is. And he goes on to say, Behold what manner of, of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, <clears throat> that we should be called the sons of God. Okay, so this is, this is somebody who is... Uh, still learning, John. Remember, he was the youngest anyway. But he's still learning because he says uh, that we should be called the sons of God. Well, you know, in God's mind, he's, and in the world of done, he's not looking at all your problems. He's not. He's looking at his son, and that's where he put you and me. Not, not Jesus of Nazareth, we're still talking about for the world. The son, the pure son, the pristine son, the son that never knew sin, never was acquainted with it, never saw it in action before time before the world, before creation, God. In the beginning, God. Okay. So again, you know, we have to, uh, this, this stuff isn't just, uh, in a sense it is technical, but it's not technical in that it's all based on spirit and truth as God knows it. And that's a good thing, because if we're ever going to know it, we'll have to be brought into the Son. And we'll have to be brought into the relationship with the Holy Spirit, who loves revealing the true Son, not just why Jesus of Nazareth went over there and, you know, picked up that, you know, that stick or something. <laughs> wonder why he did that. Well, you know... <laughs> No need wondering about a bunch of this stuff until you know the person. Because, you know, somebody else can go pick up that stick and they're going to take it and bop you over the head with it. it you got to know the person, not just the thing. <clears throat> All right, so, that we should be called, and this is why I said, well, he's still growing, because he said... <clears throat> Oh, what manner of love this is that we should be called the sons of God. Well, the manner of love is, yes, 
Um, we're called sons of God, but it's more than that. It is we are in the Son. The, the Son what? The Son of the Father's love. So that there. If you want to know, you know, I mean, the reason why I'm belaboring that a little bit is that, <clears throat> you know, I remember when I first got saved and, and you know, some, many of you know my background. You know that I went to three or four different foster homes and then into a very large orphanage and uh, Oak Cliff and all that kind of stuff. And so when I got saved, I just went, oh. <gasps> You know, how could he love me so much that he did this for me? You know, what is it about me that he would love me like this? And one day the Spirit of God just said, well, it's not about you. And you're not, you're not the primary focus of this. But he did love us to bring us into this son. Amen. You see, that's still powerful. I mean, he could have left us out of the sun and said, well, do it right, you know. <laughs> but he didn't. But he didn't. <clears throat> and so it says that we should be called sons of God, called sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. And now he's starting to talk. He's getting some momentum here. The world doesn't know us because it didn't know him. Well, it's more than a mystery. It is that we are the mystery that it is, is that we're in him and it doesn't know us because it didn't know him and we're in him. So it's not going to know us. <laughs> See, Jesus, uh, the scriptures say, um, well, the scriptures talk about the new Jerusalem being like transparent gold. We've discussed that many times before. But Jesus, the person, isn't transparent so that when you look at Jesus, you go, oh, there's me. I see me in the high end. <laughs> you know? And he goes, go away, man. This place is cool and you're a weirdo. You know, no, this is, this is, we have to know ourselves in him. And when you do, then it's a whole different you. It's a completely different you because you are now one. You, you have now experienced oneness. You have been joined, but joined can sound like two like that. You know, even, even marriage, you know, we say, well, the two shall become one. But really, in many cases, there's still two. I'm not looking at anybody here, especially on this side of the room. <laughs> but there are. All right. Um, Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it didn't know him. And, and OK, so it doesn't know him. And then we're over here like disciples and so it, it doesn't know him, but when we be taken out of, as it were, this world that we're part of and, you know, and brought into a new creation in Christ, placed in him, then they're not going to know us because it's him that they're going to be looking at, trying to figure out. <clears throat> and yes, the mystery is also there. And we talked about that a little bit last time also. A very important area. Um, <clears throat> verse 2, beloved, oh, that's what he calls Jesus, you know? You are accepted in the beloved. He must be looking at Jesus again <laughs> and his body. And he says, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now we are the sons of God. So verse 1 talked about being called sons of God. So he wanted to clean it up and clear it up. And he says, you are the sons of God. You are that. You are one with him. This is settled. Not just at the cross 2,000 years ago. Not just uh, in an event. 
but in a, in a situation long before the world was created, where God's love and God's heart brought us together in his son. Okay? Beloved, now, now, okay, so if you have any question, <clears throat> you know, um, God puts you in his son. God says now you are. Amen. So stop arguing with God, please. You know, we'll, we'll get into a place where to help us to understand this, where we're, we will look into the mirror. We will look into the mirror. It's important what we see there. Because there's a seeing that must take place. <clears throat> um, now are you the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Okay, so he is saying, and I, I'm going to get into all of this a lot more later on. But he's saying, now you are the sons of God, but there's still something that you shall be. And it doesn't appear yet. You say, well, what, what is it? <laughs> you know, it doesn't appear. You know? I mean, it's in the scriptures and, and you can know and we will know and we will get into that. But you have to begin. This is, this is beginning to, to formulate what, what we are and how we're seen and who we are now as opposed to who we were even at new birth. New birth, you know, new birth can birth you into this world. And then while you're born again in this world uh, or get born again in this world, and then you can, you can be um, a Christian and then you can walk around and do deeds and things and all this kind of stuff, but you are still going to mess up. Did you know that? Yes. You're still going to mess up a lot. Yes. A whole lot. Way, no, way more than what you know. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> way more than what I know, but I, he's given me a few glimpses and I went, oh my God, <laughs> you know. But that's important to see because then when he opens your eyes to what you shall appear, it doth not yet, but it shall. And another place it says, then shall you appear with him. Oh, how beautiful. And, and in that place, which is him, but we're calling it the world of done, in that place, you have no sin. He's taken care of the issue before you were created, before you tried your best as a Christian. And there are scriptures that describe this revelation that it's just incredible jubilation of soul and heart. Now you're talking, we hold what manner of love. And, you, you know, because there's true recognition that, you know, everything that I've done and all the things that I don't know that I did and all of the times I, I hurt God or, or, you know what I mean, or, or went contrary to the life of Christ or uh, all of these things, all of these things put self in front of my other people and all these things. Well, you know, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature, a new creation. And then it's starting to appear. <laughs> yeah, well, how many of you here tonight, even on, on Zoom, how many of you are uh, a new creation, a new creature in Christ? You'd be right. <laughs> You'd be right. You're already there. And so 
So then he says, <clears throat> um, and, and now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear. Notice that it didn't say, uh, but it doth not yet appear. Wouldn't that make you go, oh, come on. Why did you have to say that? Yeah, now, I'm, now I've got hurdles again. <laughs> it says, and it doth not yet appear. Uh, beloved, now are you the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. There's your but, but we know. That when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In other words, there will be a seeing that understands the mystery. The great mystery that's been hid from generations and ages and before time. You'll understand it. And, and it's... Let me just say that it's not as profound as you would think in a certain sense. It's just liberating because now you are a different person without a, a, a list of what's, what you've done wrong. Jesus took care of that when? Before you were even created okay <clears throat> so when uh, um, but we know and I, I like I said we're going to go over this in a little more depth at another time but but we know that when he shall appear so the so the appearing and get this the appearing is not oh I see it I see it um that he's no longer going to count my sins. They're not even going to be existent anymore. No. No, yes, that's, that's a result of this. The seeing is, but we know that when he shall appear, when he appears, when he appears, you're going to be like him because you're in him. Now, you're already in him. And your sins are already dealt with. But when, when you start understanding this, you're, you start making it more and more and more about him. When he appears, I'll know who I am. I'll be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Don't need it. Don't need it. He has made unto me righteousness, wisdom, and sanctification, and redemption. And so, so there, there begins a seeing, but, but the, the seeing, which is when he appears, begins to bring forth fruit where we begin to understand these things. It begins to grow and it begins to develop so that comprehension of eternal things that have been hid for generations and we'll start coming alive. All right. <clears throat> so, if that's true then, we should be like him for we shall see him as he is. See, we shall be like him because we're going to see him as he is. Well, how does that work? I mean, think about it. I mean, we're going to be like him because we see him the way he is. Well, if you're in him, then it works. So he's not working on you. you, see, you do you see what I'm saying, though? He's already tried that, and it didn't work. <laughs> now he's working on you knowing where you are and in whom you are. You are in the sun, the pristine sun, the pure sun, the sun before time. And God... The Father and God the Son, through their great love, initiated this. Initiated this. 
All right, so, and every, oh, so then it says, verse 3, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself as he is pure. And, and the, hope isn't, the hope isn't for something to happen like this, like, well, once, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope that one day I'll be part of something where there's no more sin and he doesn't, you know, whatever. That's not the hope. The hope is that we see him as he is. And we will, because he says it does. He says it right here. Even though it mentioned the hope here, he says it is. And, but we know that when he appears, we'll be like him. Hope. You said it, Lord. I've said that to God a lot of different times. You said it. I'll hold the Bible up and go, you said this now. And I've said, and, and you clearly are not, you know, have you looked at me lately? <laughs> You're not upholding your part of the bar bargain here. <laughs> but, he's, but he has already. And I'm just griping about ignorance that I don't know what it's about. I'm letting my ignorance guide my tongue and guide my understanding and go, well, you know, please come. In this, in this sense, he came. In this sense, he came and he finished the work. Purifieth himself. That's talking about the faith of this. And that's a, that's a big area. And when I say that, I don't mean that it's a... Um, I'm getting all kind of texts coming in. On my <laughs> it's we faith is just such a hard thing for a lot of people. And and uh, when you say faith, 90 percent of the time, it seems to me that people are talking about um, um, that you you faith is a work. You have to do it or it's not going to happen or something like that. Like believing for over a sickness or something like that, you know. But this faith is faith in the faithfulness of God. Now some of you were probably in my Romans class. Anybody remember that Romans class? I dealt with this. <laughs> And if you want to dig in a little more, it's, it's helpful to know that that's really what it's talking about. It is, ble uh, especially, especially the book of Romans, it is talking about faith, as it were, in the faithfulness of God or in the love of God being faithful to love us or in, the, you know, all the, th all the promises that we, we look at ourselves and go, well, you're not, you're not doing it. He's going, I'm faithful. Hang on to me. Hang on to me. That's what he's saying. Hang on to me. You know, at one point, was it when, when he raised Lazarus and he said, I told you if you'd believe, you'd see the, the glory of God. You know? Just be with him. See, we make it a religious thing. We do. Our religion is so big in us, and we don't even realize it. But he, you know, God doesn't have a religion. You know, I remember when I was teaching in Georgia. Yep, I was teaching in Georgia at my brother's, my older brother's church. He was a deacon there. He's moved since then, but... And I stood up in front of that church, and they, my, my brother asked if I could preach, and they said, yeah, and this was my first time. And while I'm preaching, I said, you know, Jesus doesn't have a religion. God doesn't have a religion. 
I said, Jesus isn't a Christian. <laughs> the good news was I had built it up, slowly putting the pieces together so that when I said that, it wasn't just, you know, they, they, they were actually ready to listen. And when it was all over with, they were really open and hungry and talking about it. And even later, my brother called me and said, well, that was a hit, you know. He thought they'd string me up. <clears throat> uh, you know, I think I even went on to say, well, if he's, if he's anything, he's a Jew. <laughs> so, you know, then there's me <laughs> and this stuff. But... But, uh, you know, it's the truth, and, and we need to see that God, before time, there was no religion. And there was, I, I even said stuff like, well, he didn't have a book that he followed after. Or, you know, he didn't light candles or any of that kind of stuff. He is the light, and he is the, the word of God, and he is all this stuff, and that's what he is. And he doesn't have an outside thing. It's just who they are in their nature and it's not a religion. No. It's spirit and life. Um, yeah. And when we start really seeing that, man, it's like shedding all this stuff because we've, uh, you know, I mean, religion is just so religious. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Just so much religious. We want Jesus. We want the Father. We want the Holy Spirit. And before time that's what there was. And that's where he brought us into. So he skipped over all of the world's religions. <laughs> he skipped over all of the, the uh, uh, things that you have to do. And he just sent his son. He sent his son. He put his son in us, but he put us in his son. And those were the two big deals. He put us in the Son, and He put His Son in us. And so now, we're, we're part of that, whether you, know, whether you can comprehend that or not. We're His body. You know? I mean, my body isn't like, how do I say this? My body isn't Randy on this front. My body... Randy is this weird guy that you know. You know what I mean? That, that's me. This is my body. This is my vehicle. This is my travel trailer. But somebody has to be driving that travel trailer. And in this case, it's me. So watch out getting on the streets tonight. So when we start comprehending that, then we, we realize then, well, my body is, is the body of, you know, part of the body of Christ, but it's temporal, so it's not. But we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And that makes everything that he is or has ours as long as we're not a bunch of Christians running around. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what I mean by that is just being us religiously for God. That's not what he wants a body for. He wants a body to manifest himself. I mean, you know, people are going, you know, when Jesus died, you know, you know, Oh, he touched me, he fed us. Remember when he fed us? Remember all of the, you know, the miracles he did and everything? And, you know, let's go get the body of Christ and let's hold on to it and love him and everything, you know, and, and it's his travel trailer. So they go to get him. He's, he ain't here. <laughs> he ain't here. Like Moses' body. Devil wanted to steal it. Well, it doesn't mean, but you'll turn it into something, won't you? <laughs> All right. 
So, uh, finally we get to what we wanted to talk about tonight. I hope that this hasn't been too bad for you, too hard. <laughs> Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, okay? And, and he said, you are that. You're not, you're not going to become salt. You are salt and light. No, I'm not. I'm stupid and ignorant. And he's going, no, you're not. You're making me cry. And you're going, Jesus, don't cry. <laughs> he's going, well, I cried over Jerusalem. We are the salt of the earth. Well, okay, take that and run with it. Go through the Bible, old page after page after page, and look at what he says you are. And don't want to argue with him anymore then. See it, believe it, and say, okay, I'm with you. I'm with you then. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to be about my business. I'm going to be about the Father's business. And the Father sent me for this and this and this. That's where I'm heading. But if we always make it about us, then we haven't seen in whom we are. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't, it could be bad English, so maybe it doesn't make sense, you know. <laughs> like, well, that was really bad. I'll never understand that. <laughs> okay, so you're the salt of the earth, you know. Um, what is it? But if the salt has lost its savor, if it loses its purpose, if it loses what it has, what it has naturally, and salt can do that. Did you know that? Salt can literally lose its saltiness. Well, we can lose our purpose. We can lose the purpose that God has for us, that we are joined to Christ, that we are one with him, that we're, we are the light of the world because he is our light, and then we are shining that out. So... I wrote, don't lose your purpose. You've been salted. <laughs> You've been salted with salt. It's already given. Now lay hold of these things by faith. Now remember. Remember this, please, about faith. It just means agree with God about what he says. You would say, well, I don't seem like light. You know, I seem more like the devil <laughs> or darkness. I seem, I, I get dark. I get really dark. Okay, well, you're the light of the world if you're born again. I got news for you. And you can say everything you want about how much God isn't helping you or how much you need Jesus or how much this or that. You can go into all of that, but you're on a rabbit trail that leads nowhere. And I guarantee if you stay on it, 20 years from now, if, if you don't die, you're going to be on the same rabbit trail. You have to get in agreement with him and one with him. And you are one with him. And you are in agreement when you just look at it and go, like tonight, and listen and go... I'm with him. And you're going to do that more and more and more as we go through this stuff because there's so much proof of what he has done with you, in you, and for you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So, uh, 1 John 3 said that we are already sons of God, but it, does, it doesn't yet appear what we are. By what power will that happen? By what power will we know will, to, to really realize what we are, what, he, what he's saying we are not yet appearing that to be? It doesn't appear that that's not the, yet. Well, how do we get that then? Um, I put, by what power will that happen? Or how do we become established in the world of done? And that's really what we want to do, isn't it? 
And just constantly to remind you that it is just to be established in the sun before the world, before religion, before uh, people were arguing and fighting, before the devil got it mixed in. Inside of him, there is no devil raging. There is, I'm, I'm comparing that to the world that came about through creation. In him, there is no devil raging like there is in this world. In him, there is no lying or cheating or faking it or da 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 like there is in the world. It's not in him like that. It is a different reality. It is so different. It's one that it's hard to comprehend, except that's why we're taking the time to go through the scriptures. And that's why we're talking about it. And that's why we're talking about it one with another. And so Romans 16, if you want to turn there, this will help a little bit. <clears throat> Romans 16 <clears throat> and verse 25 through 27. <clears throat> Ready? Romans 16, verse 25. Now to him... <laughs> Somebody's on the right track. They immediately just got the focus to him, not to themselves. Now to me, I will, you know. No, no, no. Now to him that is of power to establish you. And he's talking about in this whole area right here. <clears throat> you say, oh, how do you know that? Well, I'm psychic, plus I read the next verse. <laughs> That's great people. <laughs> now to him is who is of a power of power to establish you. Okay, and then I wrote. <clears throat> um, notice the word power. The power necessary to establish you is not based on knowing Christian doctrine. Get this is not the power that's going to establish you. Not based on Christian doctrine not based on what happened 2,000 years ago, not based on your denominational teaching. So let me finish that verse now. Uh, power to establish you according to what? My gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Say, well, what does that mean? <laughs> it means keep listening. <laughs> it means we're getting it. It means the Holy Spirit is here. It means that God is in control. It means God took control of this bus, and we're just, you know, we're just along for the ride. And he, there are no backseat drivers. Well, Lord, I think we should, don't think, <laughs> just have faith, just have faith, okay? <clears throat> uh, according to, in accord with, power to establish us according, in accord with the revelation of the mystery which has been kept secret since the world began. So this is saying that this is how you get established. You, get, you keep hearing this. You keep seeing it. You keep searching. You keep hungering. You keep being with. When you hear something, don't, and if you don't understand it, don't go, well, I don't understand how that works. Don't, don't go there. Say, you will give me the understanding. He from way before the world was even created, out of his own love, he brought this about. This is no time to be doubting him. Right? Yeah. I mean, where, where are we going? Jesus is going, the world is done. We're going to live there. We're going to stop living in... Denton, Texas. In him we live and move and have our being. That has new meaning in this realm, folks. All right, so 
Um, and here's why I wrote that. It's not based on knowing Christian doctrine, because it's not. This is not Christian doctrine. This is before there were any Christians. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's the only ones you got there when this was founded. There was no Christian doctrine. There was only life and love because you had three of them. So, and I know what people are thinking. Trust me. Next, next week, bring rotten tomatoes and stuff. I'm fine with that. Um, or what happened 2,000 years ago. It's only important because that what happened when Jesus came was a manifestation of a work that already was done. And we will deeply get into that, okay? I can tell you that. I can say that. But we will get into it and you will see, oh my, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest. You know? We're going, oh, now we're looking, we're going back to the sun, the, the pure sun. This is the reason why he was manifested as Jesus of Nazareth. So, <clears throat> just giving you, throwing out a little, little, little bait and see who I can get here. <laughs> okay, so, um, so Paul refers to the preaching of Jesus Christ be that it be according to something specific, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. That'll establish you. You say, yeah, but, you know, how will I know, you know, how to teach Ecclesiastes? I can hear you. I know what's going on in those, those, those little brains of yours. It, there's nothing wrong with learning the word because the Spirit of God will use the word to open our eyes, but it can't be um, assuming that Christian doctrine is, that there's power in Christian doctrine. He, he talks about this is power. The, now to him that is of power to establish you. According to, and he doesn't point out all that stuff. Can I get an amen on that one? He does not point out all that stuff. He doesn't go there. Paul, I mean, that's what they were thinking back then. You know, the Jerusalem church, Paul, you're getting a little off here. You know, Peter, well, according to the writings of of Paul that are hard to be understood and you know but I'm sure it's really important remember he said stuff like that it's like God chose the foolish things of the world he chose Paul he chose Paul and he opened Paul's eyes to see before the world was and you had him write about it in so many different places and so many scriptures and then pulling it out, pulling it out of the Old Testament too and saying, yeah, why have I never heard this before? Because he wasn't ready to open it up to you. All right, so kept secret since the world began. So <clears throat> where is this power? The power to establish you is not in the here and now. It's not in the future. It's not in the past. It's in the Son that existed before all of that. Before there was a future, before there was a past, before there was a now, there was God. In the beginning, God. Okay, so that's, you know, we say, well, that's... that's Hard to be understood? No, it's not. It's not that hard. It's just that we, are, we were born here. We, everything we know come about here. Um, but 
they were not born here. They were not born. How far back did they go? <laughs> They're eternal. And so what we are finding out, more important than anything in this, is we're finding out who it is that has done this. And the answer is God the Father with the Son and the Holy Spirit. And one of the things we'll also find out is when it talks about this great love wherewith he has loved us, we're actually going to start understanding that and it's going to make it's going to bring tears to our eyes it'll just move us so deeply now i'm going to finish with this tonight and this is hebrews 7 verse 16 <clears throat> Oh, I had a line before this. So I finished off saying, <clears throat> um, this power to establish you is not in the here and now. It's not in the future. It's not in the past. It is in the sun before all else existed. And then I wrote down, can, can we be more specific concerning this power to establish? Hebrews seven sixteen. Yes. Can you make a comment about that last? Sure. You want to come up here and do it? Sure. They're tired of looking at me anyway. I, I, this is, I think, what he was saying. But I just, as I was reading, according to the power to establish us, according to Paul's gospel, the preaching of Christ, um, according to the revelation of the mystery, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, and then for something, for the obedience of faith. And all of that is... It's about, there, you know, specific things that are, it's according to, but it's all, it's for the obedience of faith. And we go, oh, okay, obedience, I'm going to be obedient according. Mm -hmm. But it's what we were talking about, what Randy was saying, is the, the faith is not something we do, but it's obedience to the faith that God is faithful. Amen. And that was just a blessing. Oh, it is. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So uh, I said, uh, what did I say? Where did I... Hebrews 7, 16. <clears throat> All right. And it speaks of the one we are now in, which all of this must go back, not to Jesus of Nazareth, but further back than that. It's still Jesus, or no, I'm sorry. It's still the Son. Okay, but it's different different modes, if you will. All right, Hebrews 7, 16. <clears throat> Who is made, talking about, uh, uh, actually it's talking about the world of done, which we will get into this majorly too. Who is made not after the law of carnal commandments, but after the power of an endless life. Okay, so I want you to picture, I want you to picture Jesus, and I want you to picture him <clears throat> way, way back, before the world began. And as you see him, I want you to see him. When I use the word made, I'm not talking about created or whatever. Just this is what he's made of. He is made. Now look at him and he's made. And, and it's not after the law of carnal commandments. You just go, just wipe that out of him. That's not even in him. Okay. And then he says, um, uh, but after the power of an endless life. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You see that? That's, that's more than just Jesus saved me and I'm going to live forever. Right? It's a lot more. It's him. And, it, and it's a realization that we are in him. The world doesn't know us because it didn't know him. We're in him. That's why they don't know us, because we're in him. Well, this is saying, if, if this is who we're in, then he is made 
not after the law of a carnal commandments or whatever, however that's worded, but after the power of an endless life. There is endless life in him that is ours. He already had endless life because he was and is endless life. So you plop us down in there and that's all there is. All of our other stuff is gone. All of our other thinkings and all of our other, you know, well, what about this and what about that? And, and there will still be a lot of what abouts. There's, we've got a lot of ground to cover. There's, there really is still a lot of what abouts. But don't, don't let those what abouts come up and take away what you are at least hearing. Hide it in your heart. Hide it in your heart. <clears throat> and then there all, you look in this, this area, you walk around in him, you walk around in the world of done, and you can't find your old life. You can't find your sins. All you can find is love. God is love. All you can find is the way that the Trinity operates <coughs> towards one another is nothing like the way the earth is and it's nothing like the way our lives are lived. It's free. We're free to love. You know, we're free to live. And to live there in him, it's the power of that endless life that's our motor. It's the power of that. That's what it says right here. But after the power right, of an endless life. Well, I'm for that. Amen. 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 Uh, I think probably, because um, I appreciated Jennifer saying something, um, that if y'all can remind me or, or if you have, I know, I know that the Lord is sharing with everybody and I want to try to open a little bit where we can have a little more sharing and stuff. But I also uh, know that, you know, we could get off on sharing stuff that I haven't covered yet. And then everybody's going, well, yeah. <laughs> Just be patient. Just be patient. Cause I, and then share with one another. But God is got us going. He got us going. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, again, thank you, Faf and Mike Gentry's walking, rocking himself into the depth of the Lord. Look at him. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, thank you. Let's see who else we got here. We got a Kim, of course. Yeah. Dennis and Jan, I think there's somebody else, but I cannot. And Patty, Scott. Patty and Scott. Scott usually does the, uh, the Zoom, and he uh, laid down his life. Y'all know that he's had this cough, and it's been for, how, how long did you say again? Eight weeks. Uh, so we're going to close in prayer for him, because that's been a long time, and he... He, out of his own volition, said, you know, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and go over here and, you know, um, you know, so it doesn't disturb the class or whatever. And, but we want him to get well. So, Father, we just thank you uh, for all that you're saying. And, and we understand that it is, according to your word, it is establishing us but it's establishing us in another realm, another reality that is so secure and so without fault. Because uh, it's, it's pure, it's just pure. And we've never been into a pure place before. So we have a lot of questions and we have a lot of needs, but we 
We are here for you, Jesus. We are here for you. So together, because we're all on this journey together, together we just say thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we pray that your glory in us will rise to you and bring you much glory through Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray. Amen.